was in Washington last September, a year ago September, and I got a call early in the morning that a big thing was going to happen at Duke and I needed to get right back there. And that's because yet earlier that morning, you had received a call from Stockholm and you were the winner of the Nobel Prize. I was not that amazed because I was told when I first went to Duke, Sandy Williams, then the dean of the School of Medicine, told me the first person on this faculty to win a Nobel Prize while you're president will be Bob Lefkowitz. Well, okay, so it was. Uh, <laughs> but when you won it, well, there was a kind of pleasing obviousness about it. Everybody knew you deserved it. Uh, uh, and then there was this other wonderful thing that the prize was shared. And usually that, of course, suggests flags of flaming envy, but it was shared with your own former student. And that meant for us that you won the prize both for being a great researcher, but also for being a great teacher, a great releaser of the talent of other people. Shortly after you won the prize, I asked if you would just appear on stage with me in Reynolds Theater. 600 people were in the room, and about another 400 were in another room watching on a screen. And this ranged from freshmen in their fourth week of school to senior scientists uh, to people of the community who knew, who knew you from the dry cleaners, you know? And uh, you, know, you have that kind of a self as well, right? Uh, but what was so fun to me was at the end of that time, people hung around and hung around and you answered every question. And then a group of students, I don't know that they literally carried you on their shoulder, <laughs> but they gave you like a personal cortege walking back from the Bryan Center back to your lab. And I just thought, you know, you're a boy of our village. You know, the village is Duke in this case. Uh, and everybody just felt that it was a, a happy tribute to our whole school to have you win this prize. Mm -hmm.